For our third episode of Season 3, we head to Kings Island Amusement Park for our second episode in a row about an incident that occurred in Ohio. This is the story of three adults who all just wanted a fun night out. King's Island was born out of disaster. The idea for the Mammoth Park was conceived in 1964 when Coney Island, a hugely popular amusement park located on the Ohio River, flooded and was submerged in 1.4 metre waters. Faced with continual flooding and limited space for expansion and parking, the owners decided it was time to relocate. Leading the way was Gary Walks, son of Coney Island president, Ralph Walks. Gary spent years researching, traveling abroad and debating with the board before they finally settled on relocating to a site 16 kilometers up the road. Construction of the park began on June 15, 1970. A man by the name of Lewis H. Woolsey was in charge of construction for the park, but there was one thing standing in his way, a graveyard. To make matters worse, no one even knew where the graveyard was. It had been untended since 1890. A search crew on foot scaled the 80 acres of unexcavated land and finally came across remnants of a barbed wire fence. Inside the fence, Foot-high myrtle covered the ground and waist-high weeds and dense trees made it difficult to see anything on the ground. But after some searching inside the area, a worker spotted it, a single tombstone. With the graves of 69 people on site, it's no surprise there's many tales of ghosts that haunt the amusement park. Kings Island was even subject to an episode of Ghost Hunters, titled Roller Ghoster. One of the well-known ghosts said to frequent the park is a five-year-old girl called Missouri Jane Gallinier. Unsubstantiated rumours say she drowned in a pond of water near the cemetery in 1846. Past guests have described apparitions inside of the amusement park of a young girl, about four foot tall, wearing a 19th century blue dress. Kings Island was first opened in 1972 with a $31 million price tag. That's $214 million adjusted for inflation in 2022. In its first season, the park received 2 million visitors. That was double what Coney Island had received in its final year of operation. Kings Island rides are credited with invigorating the love of modern day roller coasters. The ride, the son of the beast, will induce a weak feeling in the legs just at the mere sight of its dips and height. It was also the first ever amusement park to sell pizza. When the park first opened, many popular TV shows used it as a filming location, such as The Partridge Family and The Brady Bunch. Even Evil Knievel, the coolest stuntman in the history of the world, successfully jumped 14 Greyhound buses at Kings Island clearing a record-breaking distance of 41 metres, a record which stood until 1999. Woody Harrelson used to work there, and they even had Carmen Electra in the dance show. As we know through previous seasons of Fairground Fuck Ups, while so many people go through the turnstiles of these parks and have a great time, many of these parks have dark chapters to be uncovered. As we are about to find out, Kings Island has a dark chapter known as Black Sunday. It's Sunday, June 9, 1991, 8.30pm. One part of Kings Island is Oktoberfest, a tribute to the German beer drinking festival, opened with the park in 1972. The area resembles a German town with timber-framed German-style architecture. The Fest House building is its central attraction, featuring live shows with several indoor eateries. 
Nearby is an outdoor bar that serves German beers and other drinks. With a portion of its seating area located above some water, bordering Oktoberfest Lake. At approximately 8.30 p.m. in the evening, Timothy Benning, aged 22, and William Haithcote, aged 20, they were work colleagues and were there for a company picnic day, were crossing a bridge when a freak accident happened. As they went over the bridge to go on one final ride, Benning reached into a bubbling fountain to splash water on his friend. Once Benning's hand touched the water, he went into a convulsion, losing consciousness before falling into the shallow water. His friend, William Haithcote, jumped in to pull him out. Immediately, Haithcote was shocked and convulsing. Upon hearing the screams, a park security officer, Daryl Robertson, aged 20, who had recently won an employee award for his dedication to guest services, jumped in, attempting to help, and went into a convulsion as well. Within seconds, three young men were in the water, all unconscious and fighting for their lives. Howard Heath and two others heard screaming and went to help. Heath touched the water, but by now the circuit breaker had apparently tripped because he felt no electric current. Heath and two other men pulled the victims from the water. Heath's girlfriend, Paula Earls, a nurse from Indianapolis, administered CPR on one of the victims and directed others to do the same. Emergency services arrived at the Oktoberfest zone of the park. Benning was taken to Bethesda Hospital, where he recovered and was released in a couple of days. In a sad, cruel irony, the rescuers, Haithcote and Robertson, died. But Benning survived, the person who first reached into the water. The Oktoberfest area of the park was emptied immediately and closed off. But this wasn't the only tragedy unfolding. It's now 9.45pm. One hour and 15 minutes after the incident at the Oktoberfest pond, tragedy again struck. Candy Taylor, a 5 foot 5 tall, 32-year-old mother of two, was visiting Kings Island with two friends. They'd been at the park all day, sipping beers and riding almost every ride in the park. Candy's friends rode the flight commander while Candy finished her beer. When her friends were done on the ride, Candy boarded the flight commander, an Interman flight trainer ride with multiple two-person pods on the ends of articulated arms. The ride would rise up and spin for several minutes. To add to the fun, a joystick was inside each pod where you could control the movement. If you had the stomach for it, you could perform a full barrel roll. Witnesses indicated Candy showed no outward signs of intoxication, though her autopsy would show a blood alcohol content of 0.30, which is three times the limit allowed for motor vehicle operators in Ohio. Candy entered tub number four on the ride and closed the shoulder harness and lap bar. Ride attendants checked both bars to ensure that they were properly locked and the ride began its cycle. Witnesses claimed that the ride made four full rotations and Candy's tub made no manoeuvres. Then it performed a slow roll to the left, rolling through two rotations. On the second rotation, Candy fell from the capsule, striking the ground head first. Here is witness Gary Oakley describing what he saw to local news. She rotated one time. And on the second time she started to go around, she was, she was rotating left. And as she was, as she was rotating left, when about halfway around the turn, it just slung her out of the ride. She went head first and, and threw her about 30, 35 to 40 feet away from the ride. She was rushed to Miami Valley Hospital via helicopter, where she was pronounced dead of multiple body traumas at 10.34 p.m. Park employees were baffled by both incidents. Employees had been working in the pond where Haithcote and Robertson had died earlier that same day. How could the water have become so deadly 
in such a short space of time. How did Candy Taylor fall out of the ride she was locked into? Meanwhile, at Kings Island near Cincinnati, the investigation continues into two bizarre incidents that left three people dead. A 20-year-old Cincinnati man and a park security guard were electrocuted last night while trying to save a third man who fell into a pond near the German beer garden area. Officials are trying to figure out where that charge came from. Less than an hour later, a Toledo woman was killed when she fell or was thrown from the flight commander, a twisting, turning thrill ride. Riders on the flight commander are restrained by shoulder harnesses. The accident marks the first time since Kings Island opened 19 years ago that someone has been killed on a ride. The park was open today, but the ride itself is closed. Two separate investigations revealed answers to these questions. Heathcote and Robertson's official cause of death was electrocution. The resulting investigation identified a defective submerged aerator pump used to circulate the pond water and inhibit algae growth as the cause of the electrical shocks. Kings Island was fined $23,500 for various violations relating to the accident, including bad electrical grounds, improper circuit breakers and improper railings around the pond. All of this may have been prevented had the parks had a simple working circuit breaker on the electrical equipment on the pond. A modern circuit breaker costs around $30. According to the Department of Agriculture investigators, Candy was probably unconscious, probably with a leg against the joystick in the middle of the seat causing the capsule to roll. She was meant to be paired with another rider. However, the ride operators on this particular night did not insist she be paired up with anyone. Candy slipped from her seat, over the divider, and into the vacant seat, out from under the restraints. Representatives of Interman, the designers of the ride, claimed that was impossible. But ride inspectors were able to demonstrate how it could happen if a solo rider were riding in a capsule with the restraints open on the vacant seat. Careful examination of the ride ruled out any mechanical failure. The state of Ohio ruled that the ride suffered from a design flaw and noted that improvements would be required before the ride could operate again. The state did not specify what changes had to be made, but did suggest either a higher seat divider or a seatbelt. At one point, attorneys for Candy's estate wondered if an optional clear plastic cover over the capsule would have prevented her from falling from the ride. But park officials noted that the covers which Kings Island did not install were designed to restrain falling objects, keys, cameras, wallets, etc., but would not be able to stop a falling body. The case was settled for an undisclosed amount. Candy's parents also sued the park. While they were not responsible for the ride, they had sold her the alcohol before she boarded. That case was settled for an undisclosed amount. The ride was closed for the remainder of 1991 and reopened in 1992. The aftermath was to install a higher seat divider in the tub and to put a guard around the joystick so you had to operate it with your hands it could no longer be bumped by legs. By then though, the flight commander ride already had a stigma. After several years of catering to very small ridership, it was removed. Shortly after Candy Taylor's death, the park paused selling alcohol on its grounds. However, that didn't last long, with its bars now in full operation again. We will return to Kings Island for another episode, as this is not their only fuck up. Thanks for listening to Fairground Fuck Ups. You can find us on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter at Fairground Pod.